conclusions with Fidel Castro. He has, you know, issues, and you should rightfully condemn him, but he's not a Hitler. He's not genociding his own people. He's not killing them per, you know, millions, maybe 3,000 executions, 6,000 detentions. And I don't know if it's just right after the revolution or if he's been doing it the whole time. He does seem like an authoritarian as much as Woodrow Wilson was. You couldn't even utter anything against World War I during World War, Woodrow Wilson's Espionage Act days. And we're still using the Espionage Act today. So Castro had to endure the longest embargo in, in modern history. He survived 900 assassination attempts by the CIA. And uh, he had to only stay in one spot for a day or two. He would just sleep in one spot for two days and then move on because of... You know, the CIA was just after him. Who the fuck was coming after him? It could be him. could be him. It could be anybody, right? Anybody could. How much money would they, you know, could you pay somebody to turn on their boss? So he died four years ago, but Fidel Castro was the, you know, quintessential David. This David defeated Goliath. This David stared at Goliath. He didn't defeat Goliath, but Goliath didn't want David to live. And David said, fuck you, Goliath, I'm going to live whether you like it or not. Fidel Castro withstood ten presidencies. Ten presidencies. Eisenhower, FDR, Carter, Ronald Reagan, Ford, Clinton, Obama, Bush. And now, you know, um, well, not Trump, 2016, so he died before Trump. But that's ten presidencies. Fidel Castro withstood the USSR. David versus two Goliaths. And, you know, he was in there for 50 years. He's an important monarch for Cuba, saved Cuban sovereignty. Fidel Castro is never going to die, and his Cuban revolution will never die. Nobody's going to take the Cuban revolution away from Fidel, you know, Fidel Castro. Uh, Batista was a terrible, shitty piece of crap, and um, yeah, we supported him. So that's, that's a great example of when we support right-wing dictatorships, we cannot be shocked when socialist democracies happen right underneath their asses. We supported a right-wing authoritarian dictatorship. The Cuban people didn't like it, overthrew him. Now they're communists. Well, shit, maybe we shouldn't have supported the right-wing dictatorship. Maybe we should have got them some, you know, American-style democracy. Maybe we should have given a goddamn fuck. But we didn't give a goddamn fuck, exploiting the shit out of Cuba for our own benefits, for our own pleasure. The infant mortality rate in Cuba compared to America is 4.5 deaths out of 1,000 to 5.8 deaths out of 1,000, meaning that less babies die in Cuba. If you are, you know, a mother and you're given um, birth, then out of a thousand mothers in U.S., uh, six of them die. And out of a thousand mothers in Cuba, 4.5 of the babies die. So that's less. That's a whole baby, uh, 1.3 baby less. So they have a better infant mortality rate. We're, more babies are dying in America with childbirth. I mean, it's marginal, just a small difference. But Cuba has a better infant mortality rate. Cuba has the exact same life expectancy, 78 years. We have, we're expected to live 78 years here. In Cuba, we're expected to live 78 years. Cuba, uh, they have seven people per 100, seven doctors per 100 people, whereas we have three doctors per uh, 1,000 people, excuse me. So out of 1,000 people in Cuba, seven of them are going to be doctors. Out of 1,000 people in America, three of them are going to be doctors. So Cuba has twice as many doctors that Americans do. They're living the exact same life, the lifespan, 78 years on this planet. They have universal education, universal health care, uh, universal child care, and a literacy program. So Cuba has doctors all over the goddamn place. And meanwhile, twice as many doctors. So we got the, Cuba's got the same life expectancy as America. They have better infant mortality rate. More babies are dying in America than in Cuba. And Cuba has more doctors than America by double. Seven out of a thousand versus three out of a thousand. So more than double. Cuba's doing good for being a developing nation. Cuban is doing fucking fantastic. Incredible. For a developing nation, oh yeah, Cuba developed the first successful lung cancer vaccine. Simivax, it's a free vaccine to the Cuban people since 2011. But for nine years, America's like, nah, we would rather go ahead and injure ourselves. We're not for free trade or capitalism and buying and innovating and getting the good stuff. No, we're not for that. We're going to put an embargo on you because you all had land reform 60 years ago. You nationalize your oil refineries and, oh, shit, you can't, you know, fuck the mafia and the casinos, but you can't nationalize oil refineries. They weren't going to, you know, um, refine the Soviet Union oil. So what could Castro do? Castro was kind of, you know, put, uh, in between a rock and a hard place. 
So the World Health Organization knows that Cuba has top-shelf doctors. They're developing lung cancer vaccines. They have um, the highest doctor-to-population ratio in the world. They've sent thousands of doctors to more than 40 different countries, including to West Africa with the Ebola virus epidemic. I bet you with coronavirus, the Cubans will probably come up with the vaccine first. They, I mean, I bet you they'll... They'll be okay with the coronavirus because they got doctors all over the goddamn place, free health care for everybody. So, you know, just go in and get checked. <laughs> no big deal in Cuba, but in America, no fucking way. Unless I'm going to die, I ain't going to go to the goddamn hospital. Are you kidding me? Go to the fucking hospital. You think I'm trying to go bankrupt? I'm not you think I'm trying to get disrespected today and shitted on? I you think I want lackluster care for millions of dollars? I don't think so. No, 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 no. Unless I'm about to die. Cuba ended mother-to-child transmission of HIV and syphilis virus. So mother-to-child, this is huge. One of the greatest public health achievements ever. Include the lung cancer vaccine, great public health achievements. Ending mother-to-child transmission of HIV and syphilis. Uh, fighting Ebola, right? Sending doctors to Africa to fight the Ebola outbreak. They're training hundreds of brand-new doctors. Cuba was the head of the non-aligned movement, so you had East versus West during the Cold War for a long time. But they were, you know, to kind of pick the middle. Fidel's early life, he was son of a sugar farmer. He was ostracized by wealthy Jesuit students. Just to kind of, you know, this is why Fidel is the way that he was. He was a son of a sugar farmer. You know what it's like to slave. He's ostracized by wealthy Jesuit students, a bunch of Catholic rich kids sitting there laughing at him and snickering at him. It's like, oh, yeah, one day I'll run this damn country. So the revolution was a very bloody affair. It actually seems uh, crazy that he even got the revolution. Fidel was put on trial in 1953. Batista said, Fidel, why did you try to invade the Makata barracks or whatever? So Fidel had rounded up 100, 200 people, students, to try to take over the military, some military outpost to take the weapons and then, you know, fight a revolution. And then Batista is going to kill 70 of his fellow soldiers. He's going to hang them. 69 of his fellow soldiers are going to get hung, but Fidel's put on trial, and for some reason he's able to say that history will avenge him, and then he's put in jail, and then he was uh, released from jail, but then exiled, so kicked out of Cuba. So the, then the invasion of Cuba happens, right, 1958, and 80% of all those people that invaded with Fidel Castro and Che Guevara, they're all killed. I think there's like 100 people that went up there, 8 people survived. So like 80% wiped out, just like the pilgrims. So this revolution wasn't an easy feat. It was, you know, a hard one fault. It was, you know, the Death Star shot, Luke Skywalker, Death Star, one in a million shot. And he got it. He got it, right? He was uh, able to take the country over. So Batista killed thousands. Eisenhower supported Batista, propped him up, give him weapons, give him money. JFK candidate said Cuba had to endure one of the worst economic colonization, exploitation, and humiliations in the world. 1952, Batista came to power in a coup d'etat. Oh, that's somebody you want to give weapons and money to. Someone who just, you know, took the country over with, had no legitimacy to begin with. When are the elections coming, Batista? No elections? Oh, okay. So there's no denying the Cuban Revolution. It was absolutely revolutionary and will live, you know, in infamy for world history. And if you're not fighting in the name of revolution, what the fuck are you fighting for? Counter-revolution? You're fighting against people that believe in shit? Neutrality is on the side of the oppressor. So if you're not fighting in the name of revolution, then you're a counter-revolutionary piece of shit. You're stopping the march of progress, the march of time and progress. You're trying to stop the revolution. You're trying to stop the massive sweeping changes that would be good for the people. Why would you do that? Because you don't have any beliefs yourself. You don't, you don't believe in nothing yourself, and somebody's trying to do something good, and you just want to be a dick. You got yours, right? You're, you're doing fine for you, and you don't want you don't give a goddamn fuck if anybody else is doing fine. So, you know, Cuba's got a health paradox. It's a developing country, third world but 30th, in the 2019 Bloomberg Healthiest Country Index. They got constitutions, they're electing people, uh, the head of government, Prime Minister Manuel Cruz, since December 19, 2019. Let's see, anything else? Uh, Nelson Mandela's friend, he offered support liberation struggles, specifically in Angola and Algeria, but Yemen, Mozambique, Namibia, Zaire. So, overall, overall, I think Fidel Castro's legacy is, you know, 
it's protected. He's you what political dissidents? Okay, Woodrow Wilson threw Eugene Debs in fucking jail. So you want to talk about political dissidents? Nobody's saying shit about that, but we're gonna you know throw Julian Assange in jail for the espionage act that came from Woodrow fucking Wilson, and he said you couldn't even utter a sentence against the word if you uttered a sentence. Eugene Debs just made a speech. This one guy passed out leaflets, and then this other guy made a movie about the American Revolution that put the British in a negative light, and then they all get you know thrown in jail. They get fined, thrown in jail, and their lives are ruined. Eugene Debs gets out, and then he dies a couple years right afterwards. The May Day riots happened when he got thrown in jail. He's going to run for office while he's in jail and get the most votes while he was in jail. But what the fuck kind of life is that? You know, throwing political dissidents in jail. If you think throwing political dissidents and having no democracy and no say-so, being an authoritarian dictator is a bad thing, then you should hate Woodrow Wilson. But I don't hear a lot of hatred of Woodrow Wilson whatsoever. fucking ever. Woodrow Wilson was a piece of shit, a terrible goddamn president. He killed freedom of speech and stopped all those good people. Wild Bill Haywood and Emma Goldman, Charles Schink, the Abrams, and those Russians who were passing out leaflets, Charles Schink, Robert Goldstein... Just, you know, innocent people after innocent people for saying something that m might be misinterpreted as not being incredibly patriotic. Wait, a film about the American Revolution against the British? But the British are our allies. Are you trying to destroy the war effort? Get in jail, Robert Goldstein, for making a movie. This is just Woodrow Wilson being jealous that somebody had come up, you know, was bigger than him. And, uh, yeah, so I think Fidel Castro's legacy is going to be intact. I mean, he's not as, when I think about, like, yeah, you can't justify other people's badness by other people's badness, but I want some, you know, consistency. When Whoopi Goldberg says Fidel Castro is a piece of shit, how could, does she say Woodrow Wilson is a piece of shit? Does she say George Washington, who owns slaves, is a piece of shit? Or does she say, well, back in those days, you know, they could own us black folks, and that was fine and dandy. And Nelson Mandela loved Fidel Castro, so Whoopi Goldberg, does she not like Mel Nelson Mandela? Does she not respect the views of Nelson Mandela? Why would Nelson Mandela absolutely adore Fidel Castro? And then Whoopi Goldberg is just like, what? Talking about Fidel like he's got a literacy program means uh, you love the Nazis. It's the same, right? There's good on both sides. There's good on both sides. It's the same thing. <sighs> so, yeah, Fidel Castro is a great man. And uh, he's a boogeyman to some of the capitalists and people on the right, but he's a boogeyman. He's mostly a fucking boogeyman. He just has so many goddamn accomplishments. I don't see political dissonance and murder. Murder is wrong. I mean, he killed people during the revolution, and then he had authoritarian society. So there was lynchings that happened under Woodrow Wilson. They lynched a bunch of German-Americans. And um, lynchings actually with black people went, you know, spread all across America. 1919 was crazy. Strikes were happening all over the place. Lynchings were happening. So murders just happen all over the goddamn place. That's Woodrow Wilson's America. So, I mean, if anything, it would be best to criticize Woodrow Wilson because then we can improve ourselves. Criticizing another country and acting like, that's propaganda. You're buying into the propaganda. The reason why we have an embargo, the reason why American people is just supposed to instinctually react to how shitty Fidel Castro, Fidel Castro never killed any American, never invaded, never genocided. He's not genocided in Yemen the way United States and Saudi Arabia is genocided. So he never genocided another nation, another country. And he may have killed 3,000, you know, political dissidents and then threw 6,000 people in jail that, you know, arbitrarily. And those are bad things and they should be condemned. But if we're not going to equally condemn them for our side, then I don't see how you could sit there and say he's such a bad fucking guy. Never hurt me, never did shit to me, never done nothing to me. If anything, he just set an example of how you could run a socialist nation. Had, I would have no, little sympathy for Fidel Castro if America wasn't, you know, breathing down his neck and staring at him and had a gun pointed at his face and trying to assassinate him 900 times. If he would have just tried to establish uh, Fidel Castro's form of socialism on his own island by himself and just let it, you know, succeed or not succeed on its own accord. Let's see what Fidel Castro can do. Let's see if he can set this system up. If socialism succeeds, it succeeds. But America wants to put the thumb on the scale, make socialism fail, and then say, see, see, socialism doesn't work. It doesn't work when you've got a big old, you know, gun, a monkey on your back that's got a gun to your head. Yeah, that it's uh, it's going to have, and actually it has worked. So in spite of those things, it, you know, they have a 99.8% literacy rate. 
the doctors are all over the place. They have free child care, free education, a lot of, you know, good services. So land reform, poor peasants got land that didn't have land before them, that didn't have land before. That's just like Lincoln in 1862. Think about all the people in America that got free land in 1862. Those motherfuckers are, you know, they're, they're, they own a bunch of encomiendas, a bunch of haciendas. So they're doing fantastic. They're doing above and beyond because they got all that fucking land, you know, 150 years ago. So how's it going to turn out for Cuba? They've had, you know, land reform for 50 years, so hopefully they've been able to figure something out. But you gave peasants that never had an opportunity ever in their life in Cuba because of Fidel Castro. And that's the reason why we had the embargo, the nationalization of the oil refineries, universal health care, free land, land reform. Oh, my God. Cuba, you're setting a bad example for America. America's going to start demanding all this shit. Land, they want land? No, not in America. You don't get fucking land. Health care? Fuck you. You don't get health care. You're Kentuckian? No, you don't need to learn how to read. What? You want me to read them their books? I'm not going to read them their books. They, that's what happens. You read them their books and then start saying Fidel is a good man. Thank you. Fidel Castro is a great, great man. Fidel Castro is a great, great man. He's a, a socialist superman. So he's not a very good monster. He's not a good boogeyman. He's not a Hitler. He's not a Stalin. He's not a Mao Zedong. He's not exterminating, you know, millions. Viva Fidel. <laughs> Just kidding.